When we're tracing the line, one of the things that is important is the ratio between where is our black part and our white part. So whenever we're tracing the line, I would say that I leave between each line a ratio of like one line and a half approximately between each of them. And you don't want to have straight line, you want to give them a curve. So think about a circle and you're curving your lines in that matter. And also you don't want them to be perfect, you want to have imperfection in your lines. So um, you want a shaky pencil, if that makes sense. And also one thing that I like, and I say it later as well, as a reminder, but I like having those separation so every time there's a separation in the clothing I like showing it by not making the lines follow so you can really see that there's a separation in the clothing like at the closure of that coat. Before I start doing all the marker work I like to add the, the main shadow in the silhouette so in this case we're gonna have the a major shadow under the arm because of because the arm is raised and that's on each side of the silhouette and adding the shadow just gives more depth and more three dimension to our illustration. I just think it makes your whole illustration look so much better. So in this case, we're using the wood pencil that is black to start a gray shadow because uh, the main color in our clothes is white and black. So we just want a normal gray shadow. And it's really easy to do with the, the wood marker. We're pressing extremely lightly. We're like barely touching the paper. We just want to make a little bit of pressure to get a little bit of color, nothing harsh. Now we're going to fill in the parts that I wanted it to be in leather. So the collar, the belt, and the gloves. So we're just, really, it doesn't matter the way you're doing it. You just have to fill those parts with the, the black. And we're filling the full thing. Now a trick that I can give you to do the, the stripes is that I found it easier sometimes to just previously trace those lines with a really fine pencil. So that just gives me the, the side, so it helps the marker not to be blurry on the edge, like it's not dripping or anything, it stays in the middle of those lines. So it just surrounds it and makes it more sharp. So that's a little trick and I think it works pretty well. If you have the choice, I wouldn't choose this black marker to do this technique because with this we have either a long brush that is way too soft to do this or the, um, this larger side. And um, for a tip, I would go more for something that is like... A fine hard one. I think this size of brush would be the best to do this because you can go really in detail and the brush is not soft, it's hard, so it, go it goes much better. So for your choice of brush, if you want to do this pattern, highly recommend to go for something like this that have that type of point. You can find those points also even better, well similar but even better because they're pointy as well for those two brands of marker, for the Prismacolor and the uh, Pro Marker, they have uh, pretty much the same tip. And it's still a hard and small ones, but they have a pointy tip as well. So I think those, those two brands would be the best to do this technique. Another trick is when you have a very big silhouette, that has a lot of line like this. It can get just confusing to see which one was supposed to be black and to make sure to not make a mistake or to go over it or something. I sometimes just do um, just a little bit of paint on each end of that line to make sure that I'm not uh, messing up and taking the wrong line. 